I do want to let you know, David is right, I've been crisscrossing the country, and I, I was recently, I did a swing of showings of the film and uh, actually filming for Gasland 2. And that's right, we'll let you be in Gasland 2 in a second. Um, in Texas, with Mayor Calvin Tillman, the mayor of Dish. You may know Dish, Texas, because they have 10 billion cubic feet going through Dish, Texas every day with 10 pipelines that crisscross the state. And they have benzene in the air at 55 times the public health standard. And they have toxic emissions that float into people's homes, give them nosebleeds in the middle of the night, give them brain damage, and Calvin Tillman's two sons are waking up in the middle of the night with nosebleeds. I went to Flower Mound, Texas, where in one small area, there's a school which is surrounded by gas wells. They have 12 cases of childhood leukemia, four mothers with breast cancer, and two brain tumors in the last three years. I went and visited a woman named Lisa Parr, who has 21 gas wells surrounding her property. And this is a dream home. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. She has chemicals associated with fracking in her lungs. In her lungs. And this is an urban area. This is Fort Worth, Texas. They have 10,000 gas wells. 10,000 gas wells is equal to all of the pollution of all of the cars and trucks in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. That's the fourth largest city in America. Do you want Pittsburgh to become that city? Do you, do you want to live amongst those kinds of toxic emissions? Now, I also went down to Austin to the State House and I interviewed State Representative Lon Burnham who's campaigning uh, for a number of improvements in Fort Worth, they're trying to play catch up. He said to me, the state house is owned by oil and gas. I said, well, what do you tell these people who have nosebleeds, who are getting leukemia, who have fracking chemicals in their lungs? He looked straight at the camera and he said, move. Do you want to leave Pittsburgh? Do you want to have to move from a city that has clean air? No fracking way, who said that? You can hear it in my voice. No fracking way. You don't want to move. Because those, that's the option in front of you now. We can support this ban, which by the way would be the first ban in the city, in the, in, in the United States. You could, you, could, you could beat New York. A lot of people think there is a moratorium in New York. Well, there's sort of a half of a moratorium in New York. We have a lot of work to do in New York. The state senate passed a moratorium in New York. The assembly did not yet pass. It has not been passed by the governor. It has not been passed. We have to work very hard in New York. We have, but we, we could maybe take Pittsburgh's example and ban it here in Pittsburgh, and then New York has a leg to stand on instead of the opposite way around. The thing that I really want to relate to everybody here is how strong this movement of people is. And I've spent nine months going across the, the country. I've seen, I know, hundreds of thousands of people lining up to think about this, to work on this, to write their representatives, to form organizations. I mean, how many organizations did they list off tonight as co-sponsors to this? People are getting active. They're actually contacting the government. But this is what it's really going to take. This and more. Because this is going to be very, very difficult. You need to keep coming back. Because the gas industry will keep coming back. You need to get ready to do this quite a bit. You need to also probably get ready to do civil disobedience. <laughs> civil disobedience was one of those things listed in those Pennsylvania Homeland Security bulletins. As, uh, and civil disobedience is the opposite of terrorism. Civil disobedience is peaceful, it is organized, it is civil, it is nonviolent, and it is, act, it is the only reason why we have any of the progress that we have over the last 100 years, 200 years, whatever it is. I think the list was said earlier, but I think it's worth saying again. Women would not have the vote. Children would still be working in factories. Uh, Black people would not be able to drink at the same water fountains, go to the same schools as white people. 
I mean, obviously, the only tool that we have at our disposal against the people in that building, when it really comes down to it, is people in the streets and civil disobedience. And it's going to need to happen because they're going to come back again and again and again, and we're going to have to fight them off again and again and again until we make the transition to renewable energy, which we know we need to make. Over there, in the, conve the convention center is over there, isn't it? Okay. That's where the pushers are. They want to keep our, our society addicted to fossil fuels. Natural gas is not clean. You know this. Natural gas is a dirty fossil fuel, just like everything else, just like all the rest of them, coal and oil. And what natural gas is trying to do is promote itself as some kind of clean alternative to coal, clean alternative to oil. This is the fossil fuels industry's big push to kill renewable energy. This is the battleground for climate change. This is the battleground for renewable energy in the future. This is where you have to be. They're trying to take over 65% of Pennsylvania, 50% of New York, half of Ohio, all of West Virginia, in 34 states. This is an industrialization invasion where people are being pushed out of their homes and they're give, given illnesses and they have to walk away from their homes. Is, is Chris Halowich here in the house? Steph Halowich, I know her husband is here. Ron is here. These people, not very far away from here, are environmental prisoners. They are prisoners in their own home. You've heard of political prisoners? These people are environmental prisoners. They're surrounded by an industry that they didn't want, that they didn't ask for, that is forcing them to leave their property. Their property is worthless. Their, their, their children are getting sick. They themselves are getting sick and they are prisoners in their own home in the state of Pennsylvania, in Texas, in New York, in Louisiana, in Wyoming, in Colorado, and it cannot keep happening. It cannot keep happening. And when you get a ban in Pittsburgh, when you get a ban in Pittsburgh, which you're going Next to get, week. right? You, you absolutely cannot leave those people behind. You cannot let this stop. This is a conversation between East and West, between rural and urban. This is a conversation between people all across the United States. And if you get off the hook in Pittsburgh, even for a short time, the industry will come back. And you're going to need to stay organized, not just for here, but for New York and for Texas. I've had conversations with the Oil and Gas Accountability Project that are doing their summit here on November 19th and, and 20th. And they said, yes, we want a ban, but we don't want the East Coast to go away. Please don't let the East Coast go away if you get a ban. Stay strong, stay working for this, because you know what? It's everybody's climate. And it is a big lie. It is a big lie that natural gas is better for the climate than coal or oil. You're venting off so much toxic emissions into the air, in the pipelines, in the drilling rigs, off the condensate tanks, that this is debatable whether or not we're better than coal. We're on a par with coal. This is not a solution. This is not what T. Boone Pickens says, America's energy independence. This is more dependence on T. Boone Pickens. And on his friends in that building that would like to take the resources of Pennsylvania, destroy the water of Pennsylvania, and make and make millions and billions doing it. Without the exemption to the Safe Drinking Water Act, without the exemption to the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, and the Superfund law, they'd be out of business. They cannot do this without passing along the costs to you, to the taxpayers, in healthcare bills, in water bills, in cleanup bills. They bury their toxic pits in Pennsylvania. You own the contamination after you lease so they can take the money out of your regions. You own it, it's yours. You get that toxic pit on your land leaching down into groundwater. You get their wastewater being dumped into municipal treatment plants that shut down Pittsburgh's water supply. Pennsylvania did not do any due diligence to find out what was in the wastewater before they allowed them to dump it directly into streams and rivers without a proper treatment program. Guess who told them, guess who told them there was a problem? Was it the DEP? 
It was the Coca-Cola company. No. Yes, it was, actually. They said, the Coke is salty. What's going on here? Really? Virginia Cody, who ran as a write-in for governor, wrote to the Coca-Cola company because they have a secret formula. <laughs> this is a true story. Fracking chemicals are largely proprietary. They're their secret formula. <laughs> we know a little bit about what's in them. But Virginia Cody wrote to the Coca-Cola company. She said, this is amazing. Do you have benzene in your secret formula? I'd like to know. I know it's a secret and all, but maybe you could tell me if that ingredient is in there or not. It took a couple of weeks, but she got a response back in the mail from the Coca-Cola company, and they said, oh, um, thanks for your letter, but there is no benzene in Coca-Cola. We can't get that same kind of an honest answer from the people in that building. We, we, they, there is a media campaign to discredit the film Gasland. There is a media campaign to discredit the Hallowitch family. There is a media campaign to discredit everyone who knows the truth about what is happening. We're in a war with reality itself. They'll come out and they'll say, we're not exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act. And they'll make one spin cycle in the media and the media will come back and they haven't done their homework and they say, oh, I guess the facts here are in contention. But the fact is that you can look up the law. This industry will stop at nothing to deny the fact that they are contaminating watersheds all across America, which is why I'm saying you're going to have to keep coming back again and again. When you hear those debunkings, right, those sponsored ads on Google, which tell you what you know to be true is not true, don't believe the hype. Don't believe them. You have to talk about what you know. You have to be in support of reality. You have to talk about what's happening to the Hallowitch family. You have to talk about what's happening in Hickory, and in Washington, and Greene County, and Fayette County. You have to talk about what's happening in Dimmick, where the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection issued, said we need a $12 million pipeline to replace the water of Dimmick. Don't let the gas industry tell you that they have not had a proven case of water contamination. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, which previously rolled out the red carpet, and said, drill, baby, drill, is now realizing what has happened. And they said, oops, we need a pipeline endemic because we have Article 127 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, which is the right to clean water and clean air, and it will help the environment. And, yeah. So, we're going to leave a, a message for the next governor. I have his phone number. You want to leave him a message? You want to talk about how you're going to swarm him? How you're not going to stop? How Pittsburgh is going to be an example to the nation? You're going to take this and ban fracking throughout the United States, bit by bit, piece by piece, step by step, city by city, town by town? You want to leave a message for Tom Corbett that says that? This is his current number. He's going to be moving up, and you're going to have to re-look it up. 717-787-3391. Got that? One more time. 717-787-3391. All right, I'm going to call it right now. We're going to leave him a little message. Let's see if I can put it on speakerphone. All right, can you hear that? Hi, how are you? Uh, this is Josh Fox, and I'm with Citizens from the City of Pittsburgh. We'd like to leave a message for Tom Corbett. We'd like to say we are going to ban hydraulic fracturing in the, in the city of Pittsburgh, and we are going to ban it in Pennsylvania. Okay, thanks.